Hey, it's Ian and Coastal. So here's how to get footage off of your Mavic 3 if you don't have an SD card and you end up recording to the internal footage. So you're gonna need a battery, the drone, a USB-C cable, uh, and then either USB-A or C, depending on what kind of computer you've got. Uh, the battery has to have enough power to power on the drone. It won't power on just by the USB port. So then you pop the cover off. Like that, you can power the drone on. Just make sure that everything's clear. When is it, you can have it half folded like this, it'll just power on. And plug the other end in to the computer. So this computer has got a C port. So I'm just using a C to C. And as long as it's powered on, it will show up as an USB storage drive, labeled internal storage. And you'll see your footage, and you're gonna see LRF, MP4, and SRT files. The LRF is the low resolution version. The MP4 is the high resolution. Um, if you're using an, there's MOV containers as well, which would be the high resolution. And then the SRT is the subtitle file that was recorded while I was flying and it contains like the telemetry per frame of the video. So what I'm gonna do is I like to just grab the entire 100 media folder, drag it to my desktop, and we'll let it copy. And it looks like it's a USB 3.0 connection. Look at that. So we're getting 30 to 40 megabytes per second. So that's uh, times by 10, so 400. Is that right? 40 times, yeah, 400 to 500 megabit connection. So it's not like a 10 gigabit Thunderbolt connection or anything like that. Um, at least on my laptop, I'm using an, it's an AMD powered laptop. Uh, if you have a, a MacBook or a higher end one, I think it does USB 3.1, which is a 10 gigabit connection, which would be especially handy if you're using the one terabyte onboard SSD on the Cine version. This is just a, the straight three so it's got eight gigabytes of internal storage. Interestingly, um, if you're recording, so this footage was all recorded in 5.1K, um, the onboard storage is not necessarily fast enough to record 5.1K. It actually gave me a storage speed error complaint. So I usually see that with, if you're using a, a slower SD card or something that's not fast enough, um, so it's interesting that the onboard storage on the drone is not fast enough to record at the maximum resolution and bit rate that the drone can handle. So I'm going to hit pause here um, and we'll come back to this once it's done and I'll show you how to shut it down. All right, so the copy's done. Um, while you're sitting here, you'll notice like the fan is going on the drone just to keep it cool because there is a computer inside it and it's sitting there generating heat. Like this is the cooling fan and you'll hear it pulling a little air. So once we're done copying, you can disconnect just like a USB key and you're going to tap and hold, turns off, and then you're good to fold the drone back up. You can put your SD card in that you forgot to put in for the last flight if you didn't do it intentionally. Um, I, I really recommend, based on my experience, that you, that you don't rely on the internal storage unless it's a complete emergency. That eight gigabytes is not a lot of space. And, and like I mentioned, it's just not fast enough for, for full bit rate. So you probably want to avoid using it and carry a good, the highest speed, highest capacity micro SD card that you can get would be the best way to go. And we'll, I'll link some stuff on the screen here afterwards, it, probably some recommendations for your cards. Okay, we're gonna to switch to the screen now and we're gonna show you how to play and convert this footage into something that's uh, first off playable on Windows because the, the 5.1K stuff is pretty heavy duty footage. And then we're also gonna look at how you render proxies. So stand by here. <clears throat> okay, recording three, two, one.
All right, so we've copied our super high resolution, super high bitrate footage from our Mavic 3 onto the computer. And now we want to be able to play it or edit it or do anything with it because this stuff is beefy, right? So we look at the footage and here's a, a clip. We're going to try and open it with the built-in Windows video player. And nothing happens. It's just too much. And it's also uh, H.265, so it, you'd need a plug-in. So then let's try it with video or VLC player, which is an open source free video player. And it'll open the file, but let's see if it even plays smoothly. It's trying and failing. And this isn't a terribly slow laptop. It's got a decent eight core Radeon chip that was, it's new this year. But this footage is such a high bit rate that it just does not play. So we need to do something with this. We can keep the, the highest original because you always want to have the best, the highest quality footage captured in the camera, right? The idea of garbage in is garbage out. So if we have the best possible footage from the start, we can always catch up to being able to edit it using either software tools or better hardware or something down the road. So in the meantime, in order to do anything with this footage though, we're going to have to transcode it. Um, if you're using the free video editor DaVinci Resolve, it will not support this footage. It won't even import it, so you'd have to convert it as well. So we're gonna use a free open source tool called Handbrake. We're gonna open that up. And we're gonna do this 11 second clip. So the 271 file, it's 271 megabytes. Let's go into details. And you can see here it's 5K, 5120 by 2700, so it's 5K. It's only 11 seconds long, and it's 199,000 kilobits bits per second, or 200 megabit per second. So it's really heavy-duty frame uh, video information, and it's 50 frames per second. So, and you notice when we open it in video and that it's it's very flat, like it's a, a log profile footage. So let's drag it into Handbrake. We'll make Handbrake full screen here. And you can see the footage, so it's open to frame and it supports it. You've got some frame preview, so you can kind of see what's going on. And we need to convert this into something that we can edit using DaVinci or free other, other free editing tools. Um, so you've got presets up here. So in Handbrake, we've got the title, angle, all the information. And we're going to go into presets, and you can see there's general presets of very fast, fast, high quality, or super high quality. Basically, the higher the quality is, the longer it's going to take to encode. And if we go down to Web, Devices, Matroska, these are all different containers with different codecs inside them. And let's go down to Hardware. And we're going to go to Hardware, and we're going to go to whatever is available in the highest quality. So you look here, and we can see uh, this computer supports AMD VCN for hardware encoding. And we're going to go to H.265 up to 4K. And then we're going to go over to Dimensions. We don't need to change anything there. We're going to go over to Filters. We don't need to change anything here. And we'll go to Video. And we've got choices for video encoders. We're actually going to switch this over to H.264. We're going to keep the frame rate the same. Um, and the Dimensions, it's automatically scaled it to 4K. And this is going to be a smaller file. So what's happening is it's going to re-encode re the video into H.264. It's still going to be a higher bit rate, but it's not going to be the full bit rate of what the original footage was. So we're going to choose where we store this, and we're going to go back to the original source into our proxies folder that we've already created from testing, and we're going to call this one H.264 4K proxy because this is a copy of the original or a proxy of the original footage. So we're gonna hit save, and then we're gonna hit start encode. And it's gonna create this file, and because we're using hardware encoding, it shouldn't take too long. So you're gonna look down at the bottom here and you can see progress. Remember, this is an 11 second clip, and it's moving at 10 frames per second right now. So it's estimating about 40 seconds to convert this 11 second clip into something that's more manageable for editing and for playback.
Okay, so the clip is done. Uh, you can see the queue is finished. So we'll minimize this. Let's go to our proxies folder. And you can see the file dash 4K dash proxy. So if I double click on this, it should open fine in the Windows video player. And you can see it's now actually playing and playing smoothly. Nothing to be said for the actual footage. The color hasn't changed too much. And let's look at the details and see what it is. So we go to properties. You can see it's now a 15 megabyte file. So it's much smaller than what the original was. And we'll go to details and it's averaging 11 megabits per second. So it's 5% of the original bit rate of video. So it's for, for editing or cutting, it's good enough for, for working with, but it's definitely not the best quality version of your original. But for the case of what we're doing now, at least I can open it, I can play the footage, and I could edit this footage. I could open it up in DaVinci Resolve or some other tool and actually work on it on my laptop. And in the meantime, I've still got my original that I can archive and it's still an efficient storage format and I haven't created a massive intermediate file. So we're gonna stop that video there. At least now you've got an idea of how to import and convert footage on your computer so that you can edit this really great 5.1K footage that's coming out of the Mavic 3 on a laptop or on a, a computer that doesn't necessarily have a $10,000 editing workstation hardware setup. So something more manageable and realistic. Okay, thanks for checking this out and we'll have more tips on video editing and managing footage coming up real soon. Cheers.